Amen. Amen. Worship the Lord. Amen. God bless you today. I hope that uh, this Palm Sunday will find you well and encouraged in the Lord. Uh, I have uh, some books I'm offering. Those of you who would like to write in uh, at Post Office Box 3508 and uh, address it to Ronnie Waters or Souls Harbor Tabernacle Church. And I'm offering the the book on the churches, Troubled Churches. Talks about all the churches I pastored down through the years and the trouble in those churches and the trouble which a lot of churches have. And uh, a lot of start stories in there, true life stories. And I'm also disclosing in there my dreams and visions that I've had down through the years. So I want you to have this book. Uh, if you'll send it a $10 offering, I can send it to you postage paid free. I think that's a good deal. I think you'll get a lot of good out of this. Also, I have the, the other book, uh, Tribulation Saints and the Seven Churches of Revelation. I wrote this in my first book that I wrote back in the early 80s. I finished it. And so I want you to have this book. If you'll write in and send $6, uh, and that would be postage paid back to you. And I want you to have this book. The Tribulation Saints and the Seven Churches of Revelation talks about uh, the coming of the Lord, talks about the rapture of the church, and those who may be left behind. I want you to have this book. I know you'll get a blessing out of it. And I do have that book also in Spanish. So if you need Spanish, I got, I got Spanish too. Another one of the books that I offer, and of course you can find these on Amazon, is uh, My Shipwrecked Life. I also have another version of that called uh, uh, Vietnam Wrecked My Life. I want you to have those books. So call in, uh, write in rather. I always say call in, but I don't give you the phone number. Uh, but you could just write in at Post Office Box 3508, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. That'll go right straight to the post office, 42002. Box 3508, all right? I want to get to the word today and uh, chapter 5 of the book of Luke. And I want you to get your Bible out and follow with me. I, I love the Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I, I love what Jesus said uh, to the people. And he, it applies today. You know, the book of Hebrews in chapter 13, I believe it's verse 8, where it says, Jesus Christ... The same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus is the same, what he said back then to about 2,000 years ago is still true today. He has not changed. His word has not changed. His word is still established, as the Bible puts it, established in heaven forever. So uh, we're going to get into the living word today. Uh, Luke chapter 5. I'll begin there at verse 1. There are several stories here I want to read, and we'll comment as the Lord helps us here. It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Wouldn't it be wonderful today if we had people pressing in, couldn't wait to hear the word of God? Of course, this was Jesus in person. You know, I don't know if it would, some have said, if Jesus could just show up at our church, I know our church would be full. Well, in spirit, I hope he's showing up anyway. But if he did show up in person, uh, probably a lot of people wouldn't believe it anyway because they'd say, well, this is, a, this is a fake, this is magic, you know, this is witchcraft. You know, they even accused Jesus of doing witchcraft in his day. They even accused him of uh, speaking or doing things by the power of Beelzebub, uh, which was the chief devil. And... Uh, so, you know, just because people see things doesn't really bring them faith or cause them to believe. Some people say, well, if I could see a miracle, I'd just believe. Well, maybe if you're not believing already, and if you hear the Word of God, which is a miracle in itself, and you don't believe the Word of God, you know, then 
How is it going to help you to see a miracle? But I believe that God can show us miracles, and there's miracles all around us. I've seen miracles uh, in my life. I've seen my mother healed of, of lung cancer. I've seen her uh, get healed and, and pass out the old parts of the lungs, I mean, just in chunks. And God gave her a new set of lungs. She had a doctor uh, that was treating her, and uh, he confirmed it when uh, the Lord healed her. He said, you got a miracle, sister. He said, just rejoice. And her, her doctor was Catholic, and he said, I believe these things happen today. He said, I've seen too much of it. I'm in the uh, medical profession, and, and he said, I know what's happened. He said, the only explanation I know to tell you is that God gave you a miracle. And, you know, that's, that's what a miracle is. When there's no other explanation other than God did it. And I believe we could pray for miracles. I believe we should pray for miracles. I believe that, that uh, we should pray that God would open our eyes because there's miracles happening all around us. You know, when a baby is born, that's a miracle. Uh, but there's a lot of people in this country uh, that would like to take that miracle away. Even after it comes out of the womb, they'd like to take that little life away. And I think it's a great shame. It's a terrible thing that's happening in this country. I fear for our country. I fear for those who, uh, who count life as nothing but just flesh. Nothing but, you know, nothing, nothing holy about it. But I believe uh, that having a baby and, and when a baby is born is a miracle. And thank God it's still happening every day. God is still healing people. I've seen him heal many people. And I know that God can heal you if you have a disease or a sickness that you're suffering with. You know, Jesus took our suffering to the cross. And he nailed it to the cross. And his stripes by the stripes of his back was for our healing. 39 stripes. There are 39 major diseases. Our diseases can, all the diseases in the world can be, can be categorized in 39 groups. Did you know that? Jesus took care of it all. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered, said to him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now this is Peter's first step of faith. Uh, he hadn't become a disciple yet, because Jesus hadn't picked him out yet. But he, but he knew him. He said, now, just let your uh, uh, nets, you know, he said, uh, just... Cast them out into the deep. Let your nets down and you'll get a draught. In other words, a, a net full of fish. And Peter believed the word of Jesus. When they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they, be, they beckoned them to their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they said, and they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. I think all robbers described this as a net break breaking, boat sinking load. <laughs> you know, if we just obey God, you know, we can, we can get uh, our nets full. Uh, we can get our prayers answered. And God has a way of answering every prayer. Amen. Believe God, obey Him at His Word, believe what He said in His Word, and you'll get some results. I believe that. I've seen that happen. If we just believe what God said, take Him at His Word. Amen. Have you ever pointed to the Word of God in a certain verse or something like that and said, Now, God, you said that right there. Uh, you know, sometimes I do that. I say, say God, uh, my prayer's not been answered yet. How come? You, uh, you said that right there in Your Word. Right there in Your Word. That, that, there it is, Lord. And you know what? He likes that. And he pays attention to that. Because the Bible says that he watches over his word to perform it. And he's not going to let one word or one dot of the I, not one little jot, uh, a dash or anything, fail. He said heaven and earth would fail. 
or, or pass away. He said, but my word is established in heaven forever. My word will not fail. So the solid foundation you should be looking for and building your, your life upon is the word of God. Why can't you get the word of God in your life? The word of God will support you. The word of God is a solid foundation because it's what God said. And no one's going to destroy God. No one's going to uh, come against God. What God has said will come to pass. You can, you can bet on it. You can, you can be guaranteed that His Word will come to pass. And that's why, why you need to believe. Why put your faith to work. Believe what God said. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he was ashamed, all that were with him at the draw of the fishes which they had taken. So was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. He wanted to show him. You know, uh, you got this boat sinking, net breaking load now. You can pay off all your, you can sell them, pay off your debts, and, and now you can come and follow me. You know, uh, Peter did that. They let the, the Bible says here says that when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. They turned their business over to to someone else in their family or someone, some friends, or maybe they rented their boats out or whatever they did. Whatever they did, they, they left it all behind and they followed Jesus. And you know that's what we have to do. We have to leave this old world behind and we have to follow Jesus. You know, and, and not look back. The Bible talks about a man that has put his hand to the plow and looking back, he's not fit for the kingdom. You know, a farmer, they, the farmers used to plow with, with uh, they used to farm and, and plow with a hand plow, you know, and they'd follow that mule as he pulled along. And they, the way they would uh, plow a straight row is that they put blinders on, on the mule, you know, so he couldn't look this way or that way. And, and they'd pick a spot way down at the end of the field. And uh, they pick it like a tree or, or perhaps a, a fence post and they, they go right for it. They keep their eye on that. And that horse would, a horse and mule keep his eye right on that. So he'd go straight. And they could plow straight. There was a story one time about a fellow said uh, he tried that one time and when he got to the end of the field he looked back and his roll was just as crooked as a snake. He said, I can't figure that out. And as he got closer and closer uh, to what he had his eye on, happened to be an old brown cow that blended in with all, uh, all the brush and everything. And he kept eating a little grass and moving a little bit and moving back and forth, eating some more grass over here. And so we've we got to have our eyes on the right thing. Hello? That won't move and will always be there, and that's God. God will always be there. Amen? He'll not, forsake, he'll not leave you nor forsake you. He'll always be there. Amen. His word will always be there. Believe his word. It came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. This man believed in Jesus. Believed that if Jesus would just say the right words, just do the right thing, that he could see again. That he would be... Uh, that he would be healed again. And he said, this man was full of leprosy. And he went forth, he, and he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And, you know, we have to, uh, they had to obey the law at that time, and the law said that they, if they were a leper, they had, and they were uh, to, to be cleansed, they had to show themselves to the priest. And the priest had to declare them clean. Because they were to, to mingle with uh, others, and they, they had uh, leprous colonies where they would put them all together in one place. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, dwell with, with the common people. They had to... And, and if their leprosy wasn't cured, then they just died in that leprosy colony. And so, but uh, this is, these were the commandments that Moses given. 
But so much the more there went a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. You see, the more we hear about Jesus, the more we want. We want Jesus. The more we hear about what God is doing, the more we want to be closer to God. The more we, we hear and find out how good God is, we want to be part of that goodness that God is sharing and God is giving. And God is good. And he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. The power that worketh in us is the power of the Holy Spirit. And he said in one place, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. So if God is on your side, that usually means because you're on God's side. Hello? They work hand in hand. They work together. You know, you can't just live like the devil through the week. Then on Sunday, go to church and expect God to take care of all your needs. You know, you must serve Him every day. Every day is a new challenge. Jesus said, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So every day, we, we face a new challenge. And, and uh, don't think for one minute the enemy, uh, Satan, is going gonna, is gonna to leave you alone if you're trying to follow Jesus. Some I've heard some people say, well, I used to, look, to be a Christian, I used to... Follow the, the Lord. I used to be in church, but it's just so hard. It's just so hard to live it, you know. It's just so hard uh, uh, to 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 uh, be a holy person, you know, live a holy holy life. Then you got some others that that they use the excuse. Well, you know, why try? You know, because the uh, you know the Bible says we're no one is perfect, and uh, you know, yeah, I, I know the Bible says that. But why did he say strive to be holy? Be holy even as your Father in heaven is holy. That's what Jesus said. So if he doesn't want us to be holy like him, why would he say that? Why would he say that if it's not possible to be holy and live a holy life? You see, when the Lord saves you, he delivers you, sets you free. He gives you the power to stay saved. Amen? Now, that doesn't mean you may not sin again. Because the Bible talks about that in, in the, the first book of, of John. Where it says, Beloved, I pray, I pray that you sin not. But he said, If you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. There's two ifs there. If we sin and if we confess. So if we go around sinning because we want to, we go around and say, well, I know the Lord's going to forgive me. This dangerous doctrine that they're teaching today about the Lord's already forgiven you of past, present, and future sins, and you cannot out -sin the grace of God. Such garbage as that. It's, it's very detrimental. It's very harmful for people. It's very wrong to be preaching and teaching uh, uh, that kind of a doctrine. That just gives people a license to sin. Well, a preacher said, you know, the Lord for, forgives past, present, and future sins. I mean, what? If, so what? So what if I sin a little bit every day? You got to. I used to live next door to a good Baptist fellow, and, and uh, he was at at the table over our, our house one night for supper, and I asked him to ask the blessings over the food, and so he did. He prayed this prayer: "Lord, forgive us of our many sins today." And uh, uh, when he got done praying. He, I asked him, I said, uh, so how many sins did you commit today? He said, well, I, I don't know. I was, I was, so you haven't really been keeping record? He said, well, no. I said, well, what happens? You know, you say you have to sin every day. You said that. I heard you say that. He said, yeah, yeah, you got, you got to sin every day. I said, well, what happens if you went the whole day and you're laying there in bed at night and just about to drop off to sleep and you're thinking, wait a minute. I never sinned today that I can recall. What are you going to do, let out a cuss word? He said, well, it's not like that. I said, well, I mean, you're, you're inclining, uh, what you're saying is you're inclining that to, you have to sin every day. I said, if I had to sin every day, I would be a servant of sin. I would have no control. I would have to sin because something had a hold of me. I said, when the Lord saved me, he set me free from the bondage of sin. I don't have to sin anymore. That doesn't mean I won't. If I sin... I have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 
there in First John. I believe it's chapter one, if I, if I remember right. But he's but he said, if you sin, and then he said, if we confess, then we can be forgiven. But a lot of folks just go through uh, through life, you know. And they say, well, it don't matter. I sin, you know. Nobody's uh, no, no, nobody's perfect, you know. And, and the preacher said, I could, I, I'm forgiven of sins, past, present, and future. That means that, that I'm thinking about sin, and tomorrow I'm thinking about uh, uh, lusting after this woman. You know, maybe I'll just go see her, and I'll lust after her. And, and you know, God's going to forgive me, because I know what the preacher said. He said, God would forgive me. He's already forgiven me. Well, if He's already forgiven you, then how can you sin? How can you sin if He's already forgiven you? It's only if you sin, not when you sin. Hello? Preach it. Not when, but if. There's a big difference there. And God, yes, He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the, the number of the hair upon your head. He knows our thoughts afar off, the Bible says. But if he's, He knows our thoughts afar off, if, he's think, if He knows that we're thinking about sin and a couple days down the road, we're going to meet that gal, you know, we're going to get together and we're going to sin a little bit, you know. We're going to jump in bed together. We're going to sin a little bit. You know, I know God's going to forgive me later. Talk to Christians, you know, they're having a trouble with, with their tobacco habit. Hello? And, and they, they can't lay that weed down. They just got to, every once in a while, they got to have another weed in their mouth and light her up. And I'd talk to them, you know, and I'd say, well, uh, you know that, that cigarette's killing you, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I said, well, you just add another nail to your coffin. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, nobody's perfect. You have to sin a little every day. I've had pe people tell, Christian people tell me that. I said, well, uh, how come then, uh, uh, you know, I pastored a little church one time, and about half the church smoked. And I didn't find, I didn't find this out for a little while. I was there about three months, and, and uh, uh, I noticed that uh, when I went to the bathroom, and it was at the front of the church, I went to the bathroom before they before it was my turn to, to uh, have that part of the service to start preaching. Uh, they sang, you know, and worshiped the Lord and for about an hour. Then they turned it over to me. Well, in the meantime, you know, I had to go to the bathroom. So I went back here to the bathroom and they had just got done singing. And somebody else was making some kind of announcement or something. And so I went back to the bathroom, found my chance to go, go to the bathroom. And I went back there, and of course this is the front of the church, and I noticed that some of the folks had went outside, you know, to take a breather, I guess. They had been singing up there on the platform about the Lord and how they love the Lord and everything. And I, and I smelled smoke, and I thought, somebody been smoking in this bathroom. When I come out of the bathroom, I, I realized, well, it's not in the bathroom, it's strong. You know, it's coming from that front door. And so I opened the front door of the church, there's three or four of them out there puffing away. They saw me stick my head out the door, they <laughs> You know, I threw it away real quick. I didn't say much. I said, oh, you know, that's about all I said. But I caught him. Hello? I caught him. I knew then what was going on. I knew what they were doing to, when they took a break outside. I know of another church in town that they have a smoke break. It's a holiness church. They have a smoke break in the middle of their service so that they could come back in and and sing some more and, and hear the preaching and all that kind of stuff. Some of those folks came, that was in that church, came from that other church. Hello? And uh, I know the pastor there smoked. But, you know, uh, if we set ourselves our, our, and compare ourselves with others, if we compare ourselves among ourselves, the Bible says we're not wise. We've got to compare ourselves with Jesus. He was perfect. He is perfect. He set a perfect example before us. He proved in the flesh that you can live a life in the flesh without sin. As the Bible says, He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. He never yielded to temptation. Come on now. He always rebuked it. Now I believe we should strive. Maybe you think you can't be perfect, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive. We should strive for perfection. We should strive to keep our life holy. We should strive to walk the straight and narrow. Hello? It's not a crooked path we're walking. It's not a, a one day a week path we're walking. Hello? 
It's not live like the devil five, six days a week and then on Sunday come to church and shout and praise the Lord like you, you just got the victory, but you ain't got it. You're just acting like you got it. I know folks like that. And they think, boy, they're really something. They come to the church and they carry on and they shout and praise the Lord and, and you know, everybody claps and, and uh, you know, they think, boy, that's a holy person. If they only knew them through the week. You ever work with somebody like that? And you ever, you ever see them lose their temper or something? Get them mad at you? They cuss you out. Hello. But they're a Christian. Oh, well, I'm sorry, brother. I just li slipped out, you know. Well, it must have been in there or it wouldn't have come out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible says, the mouth speaketh. That's what Jesus said. Out of the abundance of our hearts, the mouth speaks. Whatever's in your heart is going to come out. It's going to show up. It's going to come to the surface. Hello? Some people say, well, I just lost my temper. No, I think you found it. You didn't lose it. You found it. Come on now. So, kind of got off on the little trail here with the word, but it's always good. Amen? And we should strive to enter in. And it's not easy. It takes some effort on your part. But God will also supply the grace if you'll supply the man. Supply the person. God will supply the grace. God bless you. Write in, get those, uh, our, yeah, write in to our post office box 3508 and uh, ask for those books. Send in your offering and we'll be glad to send them back to you post paid. So God bless you and shake hands and be friendly, those of you that are here, and uh, tell someone you love them. And uh, also, don't uh, miss the next service because you don't know what you're going to miss. Don't stay home and, and uh, feel terrible. Just come on to church. Bring your feelings with you. We'll pray for you. and Maybe those bad feelings will leave. Maybe those aches and pains and, and things will leave. Come on. You'll always feel better coming to church. Uh, don't bring your fevers with you. If you've got a fever, stay at home. But if, you, if you're feeling kind of bad, you know, and you, you ain't contagious, just come on. And uh, we'll pray for you. The Bible says, if any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over them, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the Lord shall raise them up. And if they have forgiven, if they have been uh, have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. You know, maybe I thought about that verse one day. It's in the uh, fifth chapter of James. And I thought, well, maybe that's why some, some of them folks, you know, come to the altar all the time for prayer. Uh, because they want their sins forgiven. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I guess that's one way uh, to get to heaven, maybe. Uh, as the old saying goes, ride the rail into heaven. Ride the altar into heaven. Well, if you have to ride the altar into heaven, then do so. But we all need to pray every day. Come on now. Amen. Say amen or oh me. Come on now. Praise God. So, till next week, Lord bless you. And don't forget Sunday night service. And we'll see you there. Or we'll see you online. Facebook, uh, YouTube, Pinterest, a couple of them others, uh, Twitter, tw Twitter, whatever you call it. And uh, so look us up and subscribe to those channels. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Amen. How you doing, brother? Good to see you.